The Milky Way and Andromeda are two of the biggest galaxies in our local supercluster. Milky Way possesses 300 billion stars, and Andromeda, a stunning 1 trillion stars. So, the gravitational force of each is, literally, galactic. The closer two bodies in space are, the more the mutual gravity and the less expansion of space. And the converse is also true. The further the two bodies are, the less the mutual gravitation and the more the expansion of space. So, Milky Way Andromeda is a case in which gravitation dominates the expansion of space. So, they move closer, faster, that the space between them expands. As this keeps happening, their gravitation only becomes stronger and the expansion of space weaker. Hence, in an estimated time of 4 billion years, the two humongous galaxies are bound to collide. Will the collision kill us? You won't be there. It will happen in about 4.5 billion years and it won't be a collision. The two galaxies will pass through each other like ghosts because of the vast distances between the stars in those galaxies. Then, gravity will merge them together to form a large elliptical galaxy. It will take billions of years for the galaxies to actually merge, from meeting to becoming an elliptical galaxy. You would not see a galaxy actually moving through our Milky Way, looking up into the night sky through the night though. The total merger from beginning to end will take around 7 billion years. Galaxies have halos. The Andromeda galaxy has a very large halo. Scientists were surprised to find that this tenuous, nearly invisible halo, a diffuse plasma, extends 1.3 million light years from the galaxy, about halfway to our Milky Way, and as far as 2 million light years in some directions. This means that Andromeda's halo is already bumping into the halo of our own galaxy. Yep, it's getting closer. Unfortunately, no human being will be around to witness this awesome event. In fact, at that time, the Earth will have no life at all as it will be burnt to a cinder because the Sun, a red giant then, will engulf the Earth and that will be that. So, don't worry about it. What would happen to Earth? But let's say that hypothetically Earth is around at that time and does witness the cosmic collision. Would it be annihilated in the process? There seems to be a misunderstanding in this question regarding the scale of things. The solar system is a microscopic part of the Milky Way. Light takes eight minutes to get from the Sun to the Earth, only four hours to reach Neptune, and less than a day to cross the entire solar system. Light takes about 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way. Andromeda is a similar size. Neither of these objects could, in any sense, enter our solar system or really come near our planet. Rather, our solar system can drift through these objects as it is in fact doing. The Sun is orbiting the Milky Way every 225 to 250 million years. Both galaxies are mostly empty spaces. When they meet, it would be more of a gravitational dance than a collision, as very few of the hundreds of billions of stars will actually collide. From Earth or anywhere in the solar system, not much would happen unless a star happens to come close, within a light month perhaps, which is not particularly likely. There is far more activity currently taking place in the central parts of either galaxy. You can look up and see the center of the Milky Way by looking in the direction of Sagittarius in the night sky, but you probably won't notice anything special. What would it look like? This gravitational dance will also happen excruciatingly slowly over hundreds of millions of years. Not much of a show unless someone records it and we watch the replay on Ultra Fast Forward. The alternative is to simulate it and watch the simulation, but the perspective for such simulations is usually from well outside either galaxy and not just in outer space, within our own solar system. Here is one of them. All the 20-ish or so galaxies in our local cluster, the local group, will eventually merge together in a single super galaxy. The Milky Way and Andromeda are the largest two members of the cluster. The third member, and only other galaxy in the group large enough to not count as a dwarf galaxy, is the Triangular Galaxy, a spiral galaxy about one-tenth the size mass of the Milky Way and Andromeda. The merger with Triangular is projected to occur a few billion years after the merger of the Milky Way and Andromeda. After that, it will be a steady gobbling up of the remaining small dwarf galaxies. But if you really want to know what it would look like from the perspective of someone on Earth, have a look at this. The view of the night sky from the Earth is 4.5 billion years. The first three pictures above show Andromeda coming towards us getting larger and larger. In the next three pictures, gravity lets the galaxies do a little cosmic dance drawing them towards each other. On the seventh picture, 
the galaxies slowly come together. Their two black holes, which are in the center of the galaxies, join and form one huge black hole. In the last picture, Earth's new night sky shows the massive bright core of our new huge elliptic galaxy, Milkdrometer. The above sequence will take approximately 7 billion years. The merging has already started though. The Milky Way's halo and Andromeda's halo are already touching. The galaxy halo is a large region of hot gas that surrounds it. The correct name for a galactic halo is the circumgalactic medium. So the complete merger of both galaxies will take 7 billion years and the two merged galaxies will become one giant elliptic galaxy. What will happen to our solar system? There is a 50% chance that in the newly merged elliptical galaxy, our solar system will be swept out three times further from the galactic core than its current distance. There is a 12% chance that our solar system will be ejected from the newly formed galaxy sometime during the merger. Surprisingly, such an event will have no adverse effect on the system and any disturbance to the sun and planets will be remote. There is another factor here as I mentioned before. In 5 billion years, our sun will exhaust the hydrogen fuel in its core and start burning helium, which will turn it into a red giant star. As a red giant star, it will devour Mercury and Venus and will absorb our Earth. Actually, at the time of the beginning of the merge, the surface of the Earth will be too hot to support life as the sun's luminosity will have increased by 40%. No water will be found on Earth at this time. Earth will be a scorched, roasted wasteland. Take a look at this. The top picture shows how the solar system is now. The bottom picture shows what our solar system will look like when our sun grows to be a red giant. Our blue marble will be swept up and driven into the inferno. But of course, by that point, it would cease to be a blue marble. It will look kind of like how Venus looks to us now. Expansion and Collision But wait, if everything is moving away from everything else due to the expansion of the universe, how can Andromeda be getting closer? Well, at least in this case, it had to do with misunderstanding of scale and an improper visualization of how expansion works. See, previously, we were thinking of expansion like the surface of a balloon that is being inflated. In that example, all the points on the balloon are static. This works to visualize how space itself expands, but fails when it comes to the objects in space. While the balloon is expanding, the surface area of the balloon is growing, creating larger and larger gaps between any two points on the balloon. Think again about the balloon expanding. If you were to place two points directly opposite each other and measure the distance between them on the surface, they would get further apart faster than two points directly near each other. There's more balloon to expand between the opposite points, so more distance is created. Also, the galaxies and the stars don't always move in the same direction. Billions of years of collisions, deflections, and slingshots have made different celestial bodies move in different directions. There's also the force of gravity pulling things around. So, they're all kind of rolling about haphazardly. They aren't all uniformly moving away from some central point in the universe. They're mixing and spinning and rotating and revolving in all directions. Eventually, some of those trajectories are going to intersect and collide. And remember, the universe is big. I mean, really big. The distance between us and Andromeda is basically insignificant to the overall size of the universe. The observable universe is about 93 billion light years across. We're about 2.5 million light years from Andromeda, or about 0.000026% the distance across the universe. See? Peanuts in comparison. It's a big universe out there. So even if you aren't around to see the marvelous collisions, you can at least live with the fact that you can comprehend the scale and magnitude of the universe. So, there you are guys. I hope this video offers some good insight. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.